Welcome to Levy Paints. In this video, I'll be showing you how I created this meat vendor stand for Necromunda. This not only is a meat vendor stand, it also doubles up as a walkway as it attaches to the rest of my terrain. With that, let's crack in. So just going over everything I used in this build, I've got some plastic card sheet and rods, some cardboard, some bits from Gundam kits, old electrical wires, a little bit of chain, bits from my bits box, some miniatures I've got laying around, these black pieces for a plant box, some of this tubing for your flywire screens, some 3D printed bits, some random plastic tubes, and the main piece of the build, which I just noticed you cannot see in this shot, is this frame my son picked up for me from the dollar store, you bloody little legend. The main piece of the build, this is actually a miniature figure rack as you can see in the sticker. This is stackable, so if you get a few of these, you can stack these up to make some nice levels. To make this into a building, I need to put on some walls, so I've done this with some cardboard, just measured out the size of the cardboard I need, cut these to size, and then glued these into position with some super glue. Also, with the legs of this piece, I cut these off, so this is flat to the floor with the bottom beams. With all the walls on, now it's time to harden up this cardboard. So to do this, I use some PVA glue and water, make up a nice watery mix of the two. And with an old paintbrush, I just go over all the cardboard areas with the PVA glue and water. I apply two coats of the PVA glue just to get a nice solid wall. And to help with the drying, I just use a hairdryer to speed up the process. While building this model, I add some more cardboard to different areas and also some balsa wood to the floor. I apply this watery mix to those areas as well. And here it is once the PVA glue had fully dried. For the front section of his counter slash chopping board, I've used three of these black grill pieces, put those together side by side. They were still a little short, so with a couple of pieces of plastic card, it filled it out quite nicely. And to get the height of the counter, I just used a little miniature as a guide and cut these plastic grills to size. To build the counter out, I used some cardboard for this, measured and cut myself a piece of cardboard to size. Then with some super glue, I just worked my way across the counter until all the pieces were glued down. The next step with my ruler was to measure out how wide the counter would be. Once I got my sizes, I cut two side pieces and the top of the counter. To make sure the counter was correct, I checked the height using the miniature again, and then dry fitted it into the box just to make sure it fits nice and snug. I've decided not to glue the counter in. The first reason is so I can get behind the counter and paint the interior of the room. The second is to remove the counter so I can use it as a barricade at the front of the model. And with the counter removed, it also allows easy access into the room. A while ago I 3D printed myself this workbench, but I printed it too small. But today I've finally got a use for it, as I can use it for his little workbench in the back of his room. With some super glue, I just glue this into position. For his bed, only the best will do. I found myself this little orc assault ramp, cut off the two main bits on the ends, trimmed off all the bolts on the edges, and to fill the gap at the top, I used a bit of plastic card rod. And with that, he has a beautiful single, uncomfortable metal bed. For the floor, instead of the metal, I've decided to mix it up and go with the wood. For the wooden floor, I've gone with a piece of balsa wood. To get the size I need, I just sit the room on top of the balsa wood, Cut it to size. To get all the individual planks, instead of doing those one at a time, I just use this one piece with my ruler and pen, just going along, measuring out the width and the length of each plank. When ruling the lines, I press firmly down with my pen. The balsa wood is soft enough for the tip of the pen to be pushed into. The depth I go to is about the tip of the pen. And I just draw all my lines out this way. And I do this over the whole floor piece. To get all the wood grain and also damage the wood at the same time, I use a bunch of firm wire here, roll it up roughly at one end so all the wires are sticking out, and I brush this back and forth over the wood until I was happy with the amount of damage I caused. The last thing to do to the wood is damage it further with my hobby knife, so I just take out chunks and cut bits of the wood away. This killer can here is perfect to make my little boiler slash oven as the top piece where the grot would go inside would be the boiler and the front armor plate would be the little oven down the bottom. 
The three tools I used to cut the killer can were my clippers, my hobby knife, and a handsaw. With my saw, I just cut this piece to size, glued it onto the killer can, then I cut a hole in the wall and poked this through the hole and connected it on the outside. At this point, I hadn't glued the killer can into position, I just dry fitted it so I could get in here later and add some more bits. For the opposite arm of the can and the front part where the little horns came out, I used my drill to make a hole and glued in a couple of pieces of the flywire screen tubing. To fit these correctly, I had to drill a hole in the roof and two in the floor so I could fold these around and point these through. The rubber piping is real flexible, so I bent it into the shape I liked and then glued them into position. To fit this motor slash exhaust system on the roof, I used my grinding tool just to grind away some of this texture, leaving the space nice and flat. I then glued in the exhaust with the super glue, and for the bed I finally found out where I'm going to put it and glued it on the left hand side here in front of the bench. To add a little bit of detail to the interior, I chose a couple of 3D resin bits and just glued those into position. The interior walls are a little bit boring for my liking, so just using my hobby knife, I go around cutting out the cardboard. This is just to cause some general damage and wear and tear to the walls. Doing something simple like this makes the walls more visually interesting. To connect the outside section, I used another piece of that piping, cut it to size, and to cover over the gap, I just simply used some plastic card and some electrical tape. For the roller door and any other areas where I used the corrugated iron, I used some cardboard and split this in half. And to make the roller door, I just rolled up the cardboard as tight as I could, glued it down with some super glue, then I just glued some chain at the front to make some easy access to close up shop. For the roof sign and barricade, I simply just used my drill, drilled a few holes to put the support beams in. To make the sign, I just used some plastic card, cut it to the size I liked, and then glued that down. And for this little wall section or barricade, I just used some cardboard. The sign and the barricade looks a bit boring and flimsy, so to bog this up, I used the same square styrene rod, ran it across the length of the roof, and then cut some supports and glued those into position. For some more details on the roof, I used this electrical piece, glued this next to the generator thing, and then ran some wires across. And then to tidy this up, I used some square plastic card rod, and just made a little border around it. For the giant chopping board, I just used a piece of the balsa wood, cut it to size and length, glued that in position with some super glue, and with my hobby knife, just put a bunch of nicks and cuts into it, just to show it's been used over the years. Then onto the bench, I've glued a forearm, a tentacle I've cut up, and then this bucket, and also these two skulls. And for a menu, I've just used this little sign and glued this into position. The last thing to do was make this little meat rack. So for the main section of this, I've just used one of the off cuts from the front of the bench, Grab some random bits out of my bits box, attach these bits to chain using some super glue, then simply gluing the chain onto the rack. During the making of this video, there was two casualties. The first being the little character I made for the bench. I went to clean him, use the wrong chemical, and melted off his face. So his replacement became an ex-Goliath gang member. The second casualty was my phone. The machine spirit unfortunately failed. So unfortunately for this model, there'll be no painting video, though it is painted and you'll see that now. Thanks for watching AP Paints. If you liked the video, please click the sub button or leave me a like. If there's anything you'd like to see in a future video, please leave a comment in the comment section below, and I'll see you in the next one. Catch ya.